Milan is very similar to Washington in the sense that there is a, a little head and a big body. It's like the District of Columbia and uh, the continuously urbanized area around uh, the District of Columbia in the various suburbs in Maryland and Virginia. The foreign residents in Milan represent about 18% of the population of the city. Many of these people work in professional and business jobs highly paid. The number of enterprises of the province, according to the Chamber of Commerce, is 360,000. In spite of the fact that some of these companies might be empty boxes, if you compare the number of enterprises with the number of the resident population, you see Milan, the Milano is a very industrial city. Accommodation capacity is 56,000 beds in the municipality, 77 in the province. Just to give you an idea, it's comparable to the population of two small cities, Lisburg in Virginia and Frederick in Maryland. Tourist arrival at 4.5 million, which is 10% of tourist arrivals in Italy. Now, the city is big, but if we look at the metropolitan area, defined as a gravitational basin for commuting activities, daily commuting activities, as well as access to high-level services, education, health, cultural, recreation, uh, commerce, the population is 5.4 million. These uh, comparable metropolitan areas uh, are Barcelona in Spain, Frankfurt and Munich in Germany, uh, Santiago in Chile, and here in the United States, uh, Boston and uh, Dallas. Now, more importantly, Milan is part of uh, the limited network of cities which are considered global cities. Cities with the, with the globalization of the modern economy and the life on the own and have even among themselves cultural, economic, and sometimes political relations independently from the realities of the nation to which they belong. Now, Milan is an important city, but its importance is rooted in history. The city was founded in the 4th century before Christ by the Celts, a nomadic population coming from Northern Europe. During the Roman Empire, it was already a prosperous city, and in the 4th century after the end, became the capital of the Western Roman Empire with Maximilian Emperor. During the Middle Ages, the city was subject to a number of invasions, and came back to splendor and to a place of prominence economically, socially, and culturally at the, te at the time of the Sforza family, actually before the Visconti family, then the Sforza family during the 14th and 15th century. Uh, today, Milan, well, after, I would say, from the time of the Sforza family, until the modern times, Milan has remained a very important city, both under the Spanish as well as the Austrian uh, domination. With the unification of Italy, Milano became the undiscussed uh, economic capital of the country. What makes Milan a global city are basically the stock exchange and uh, the trade fair. Now, in Wall Street, in front of the stock exchange, uh, you have a bull. In Milano, you have a fist <laughs> with a, a protected finger. This is a sculpture by Castellano, Castellan, uh, Maurizio Castellan, which is a sculpture from uh, Padua, which was a, a temporary installation in front of the palace uh, of the stock exchange, uh, which was supposed to be removed. The Milanese uh, had an insurrection. They wanted to keep it there. And I think they, they are definitely right. <laughs> now, with uh, 
economic importance, uh, we have also a very important uh, cultural role played by the city. I just remind you that Milan is the city of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who spent his time at the service of the sports and developed many of his inventions there. It's the city where Leonardo left the Last Supper. It's the city of uh, Alessandro Manzoni, who is the midwife of the Italian language. You can see on the screen on the right upper side his house in Milan. It's the city of Giuseppe Verdi and La Scala. And there is also the city of uh, the Futurism Movement, which is the last uh, <coughs> important uh, contribution that Italy has made to the modern art uh, movement uh, in the pictorial art Now, with the economic uh, and cultural power, obviously we have also remarkable architectural achievements. Duomo di Milano is uh, the second largest uh, church in the world after St. Peter, and uh, is an absolute masterpiece of Gothic architecture and mainly engineering, Gothic engineering. Palazzo Brea was designed by architect Ricchini and is also a significant uh, Renaissance monument. Everybody knows the Galleria of Milano, which is maybe one of the first shopping malls ever built. And uh, the Pirelli skyscraper, which was built in the early years after World War II, has been uh, for at least a decade the tallest building of Europe and is still one of the sleekest and most beautiful old buildings they were built. This has changed. This has changed in, uh, during the last 10 years. Both foreign and uh, domestic investors are sponsoring the development of uh, large real estate programs. International <coughs> star architects. I have not invented this word. I found it in a specialized uh, literature, and I found it fascinating. A uh, designing building of great beauty. Uh, after a number of years uh, of silence, we have a new breed of architects, Italian, who are contending the limelight uh, to this international architect in the design of what I call high-tech buildings. Buildings with uh, computer design, uh, with, uh, factory uh, built uh, panels uh, installed on the facade of the building with minimum tolerance. Now, let's look at, at which are this uh, major program and the architectural achievement of the city. They are the dots that you, red dots, I will show you nine places which are represented by the dots that you see on the built area of Milan city and its province. Most of uh, these programs have been developed on this misindustrial area. That was a large industrial city after World War II. Many of these factories relocated uh, outside of the city or in another part of the country, and that area became available for development. I start with Porta Nuova. Porta Nuova is certainly the largest uh, development. It has been created on, on the dismissed area of a railway station, Stazioni da Resine. It's very central in Milan. And uh, that area has been there for almost 40 years, since I was a student at the Polytechnic of Milan. We all expected that it would have been developed as a new business district of the city. Nothing happened until an American, Mr. Hines, of the homonymous uh, corporation, Hines Corporation from uh, Houston, Texas, went to Milan, struck a deal with the mayor of that time, and started uh, the program of developing this area. You see a model of the area. When it was shown to uh, the public, uh, the majority of people were saying, well, are you kidding? Oh, that will never happen. We are in Milan. We are in Italy. Uh, this is not America. Ladies and gentlemen, voila. 
This is a picture of the same area today. The picture which was taken from the AC Hotel, which is managed by Marriott in Milan. I will now go to some of the buildings, the most significant buildings of Port de Noir. First of all, you have uh, these sleek, beautiful towers designed by Cesar Pelli. Cesar Pelli is an architect who here in Washington has designed the National Airport. In New York, he has designed the Financial District. He is very famous uh, because uh, he designed uh, maybe one of the most uh, iconic uh, tall buildings in the world, which are the Petrona Towers uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Another picture of uh, Unicredit Tower from uh, the traditional urban contest of Milan. Isn't it beautiful? Huh? This blend uh, of all the new, which is typical of uh, Milan as a city. Here you have Piazza Gaulenti, which is a round square in the center of uh, the Unicredit complex, <coughs> where the tower uh, that I showed you before is. This place already contains primacy with Piazza San Babila and Piazza del Duomo, which uh, is one of the most popular gathering points during sunny sun, Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Here you have uh, another beautiful tower designed uh, by Cohn Pedersen Fox. They are the architect who designed the headquarters of the World Bank of Pennsylvania Avenue. And they have designed also, if you drive toward Dallas Airport, on the left at Tyson's Corner, there, are, there is a, there are the headquarters of, of US Today. Very beautiful building that you can see just before the tall uh, road. Another picture of the same area with the Varesine uh, Tower. These are residential towers, among the tallest buildings, uh, residential buildings in Europe. They have been designed by the Miami firm Architectonic. Another picture of Varesine. Now we come uh, to a building which has been designed by an Italian architect. It's called uh, Bosco Verticale, the vertical woods. It's a building that this year has won the award as the best tall building in Europe. And uh, is a, a unique experiment in environmental architecture. Now let's come to another signature development. These are the ground of La Fiera di Milano which was moved uh, to the complex that I showed you before. The land has been uh, raised down, and uh, the developers have called in major architects. You have Lipkin, Isozaki, and uh, Zahadid to develop three tall buildings, skyscrapers, and then uh, residential complex. This is uh, the Isozaki Tower office building, which is almost completed. I hope that it will be finished by the time of Expo in May. And then you can see one of the residential units here of uh, Lipskin. And Lipskin, by the way, is the architect of Freedom Tower in New York. And here you have uh, uh, the residential unit by Zahadid, which is very well known in the United States. She designed several museum buildings in the United States. Let's go to La Bicocca. La Bicocca is the business area of uh, Pirelli, where the factory of the tires, uh, uh, where tires were produced. Another redevelopment carried out uh, by Pirelli Real Estate. Pirelli has created a company, a real estate company, just to develop this area. It's a mixed use development with residential building, office building, cultural, institution and also the University of Milan has opened a campus there. This is a residential tower designed by Vittorio Gregotti, who is also the author of the master plan, other residential tower, the University of Milan campus, part of the campus. And finally the last uh, site which I'm showing to you is Milano Fiori, which in my view is an exemplary development, developed by a very, very good uh, uh, Danish, uh, 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 Dutch architect, sorry, Gary Van 
and uh, you can see some uh, interesting uh, and imaginative buildings uh, designed by people. Let me move ahead now to the second part of my presentation expo. 144 participant countries representing 94% of the world population, three major international organizations, United Nations with all these agencies, in particular FAO and IFAD, that we deal with the agricultural sector, the European Union, the CERN, uh, the Council uh, for Nuclear European Nuclear uh, Energy. There are 13 uh, non-governmental organizations, and there are a number of corporate politicians. For those who, of you who are, are not very familiar with Expo, let me tell you a few things about Expo. Expo takes place every five years. Eh? The previous Expo took place in Shanghai in 2010. The next Expo will take place in Dubai in 2020. The Bureau, uh, the International Bureau uh, for Exhibition, uh, DIE, is uh, responsible for selecting the city and defining the theme of uh, the expo. The first expo took place uh, in London in 1851. Past expo has produced uh, memorable buildings. Uh, think of the Tour Eiffel in Paris, uh, the Unisphere in New York, the Atomium in Brussels, and the Space Needle in Seattle. I remind you that the Seattle Expo took place in 1960 at the beginning of the space race between uh, the Soviet Union and uh, America after the Soviet Union had launched the first Sputnik in 59. Uh, the Unisphere in New York, the Expo Ground in New York, are used today to play the U.S. Tennis Open. Now, to prepare for Expo, uh, cities have developed, obviously, a uh, beautification pro uh, program of the city, which benefits the entire population, and in particular, to move visitors around and to offer them appropriate uh, uh, facilities, they develop social and economic infrastructure, transportation, housing, recreational facilities, uh, educational facilities. Often the expo ground and facilities are used for post-expo activity, as I mentioned, in New York, the grounds have been used for recreational activities uh, and uh, even to host four facilities which now are used for the U.S. Uh, Expo Milan has a number of advantages. I'll go quickly through it, I don't want to come into that. But it capitalizes on the vicinity to Milano Fiera, that is also it uses some of the infrastructure of those uh, institutions, requalifies this means agricultural and industrial areas, requalifies near, nearby low income residential areas and uh, we live in important on-site infrastructure. Let me talk briefly about uh, the team, the concept, and uh, the activities. The team is feeding the planet energy for life. Useless to say that it's a very important team. Think of population growth. We are 7 billion today. We will be 9 billion by 2050. Think of climate change and the increasing extension of arid areas, reduction of agricultural land and the problem of shortage of water. Think uh, of the issue of food security, both on the side of health of food, but also on the, from the point of view of access to food by disadvantaged population, the poor of people who are in country affected by civil strife, war, major uh, natural disasters, and uh, think at uh, what uh, means today food production in terms of biodiversity. There is a shrinking biodiversity. So it is a, a very, very important thing. By the way, 
either he has a very important position in food processing or food production, and he's very famous from uh, the point of view of his culinary uh, activity. And uh, in Italy also are the two major institutions of the United Nations which deal uh, with agricultural development, which are FAO and IFA. They are the, the, the concept uh, represents a departure vis-a-vis -vis of previous exports. Previous exports tended to be a collection of individual national pavilions. The genius of the organizers in Italy has been to say, look, if we have individual national pavilions, not everybody will be able to participate because it's very costly for a nation to participate, to build a, a, a pavilion. And in fact, even in Shanghai, which is a much more important city of, Italy, of Milan, and certainly attracted many more nations in terms of the national pavilion, the attendance was less than Milan, because in Milan they had this idea. Let's have also collective pavilion according to specific teams. So we have national pavilion, which will be 60, and then thematic pavilion, which will be nine. During Expo, there will be a lot of activities, events, show, conference, meeting on Expo teams, and specific subject. And the objective of this activity obviously is to inform, to pay, to educate, to promote research, and to design policies. Let's look quickly at the thematic pavilion. There are nine, six will be dedicated to agricultural production, rice, food and legumes, cocoa, spice, coffee, cereal, and tubers, and three will be dedicated to agricultural environments, island and sea, arid zones, and the Mediterranean. <coughs> I couldn't miss the opportunity to introduce you to the mascot of the world. It was designed uh, with the assistance also of Walt Disney, and uh, it's made of fruit and vegetables, and in some ways inspired uh, to uh, the Arcibaldo paintings. Uh, here in Washington there was a beautiful exhibition of post Arcibaldo paintings a few years ago at the National Gallery. Now, a few words about the special organization. The master plan was designed by a team of international architects, uh, Stefano Boeri, which is the Jack Herzog, very famous Swiss architect, and Herbert Planner, in collaboration with Daniel Dixon. The organized concept uh, is along uh, the concept of the Roman city with uh, uh, decumanos and the cargo. The, along the decumanos will be aligned uh, all the national pavilion and the thematic pavilion. And along the cargo, which is much shorter, 350 meters as against uh, almost 1.5 uh, kilometers. Uh, Along the Cardo, there will be the Italian Pavilion, the regional pavilion, and some common facilities. The site, uh, uh, keeping with the uh, agricultural team, will be entirely surrounded by water, and there will be a canal which will expand at certain points uh, into lakes and fountains. Now, here again, uh, we have uh, an important uh, point. All organizers of the expos uh, have a big challenge to make sure that we be, the visit will be a pleasant. Now, in the past, uh, the pleasant experience uh, was determined by the visit of uh, the, the various pavilions, the national pavilions. It's sometimes very difficult to visit because there are long lines, uh, they are very crowded, etc. In the case of Milan, the idea has been we want to make sure that the public space will be an experience in their own. So they call in a famous scenographer from uh, Hollywood, Dante Ferretti, who has been candidate for many Oscars. They call in a, a, a team of international scenographers, and they really put all the package 
are making sure that walking through the public space will be appealing. Because there will be continuous scenographic scenery and uh, a lot of interactive installation. I hope they will be successful. I am showing you quickly a few pavilions. This is the pavilion of Italy. This is the pavilion of the United States. It's very interesting, the right side of the pavilion, because uh, along the wall, in a vertical fashion, will be displayed uh, the principal cultivations of the state, of the 50 states of America. This is the German pavilion, <laughs> very much uh, BMW, it's a very high-tech uh, sector. This is France. You can see Austria. China, Malaysia, they say that there are seeds, in my view are more peanuts, but in any case, they are very many. And uh, to conclude uh, with my images, this is the site of Expo before development. The location is strategic. On uh, the bottom uh, right side, uh, you can see two dark dots, uh, they, they, these are uh, the tower of an hotel on the ground of Milano Fiera. The highway which is uh, on uh, the left side is uh, the toll road uh, Milano-Torino. The highway which you see crossing the, the picture is uh, the uh, toll road uh, Milano-Laghi. Milano, Torino, Torino leads to France, Lyon, or in fact Paris. Milano, Lago leads, uh, leads uh, to, to uh, uh, Lugano, uh, uh, Zurich, uh, and Germany. And then uh, on uh, the uh, right side, uh, you can see also the railway line. And uh, there, there is also the high-speed trains, which go from Torino to Naples. So it will be possible to travel from Rome to Milan over 500 uh, kilometers uh, in two and a quarter of an hour. This uh, is the same site, a picture of the site taken in November. You can see the central alley with the Comanos, with already the tent on the store. These are some of the pavilion, also in November. This infrastructure didn't exist, but you saw it. The site was empty. You can see these bridges, etc. November picture. And now I show you the last two pictures, which are January 2015. I put them out from internet yesterday night. They are almost finished. By the way, if you want to see the progress in the construction of Expo, if you go into uh, the site of Expo, there is a drone that every week flies over Expo and shows you the latest developments. It's quite interesting to follow. Now, let me conclude with a few significant dates. The Expo will last six months, from May 1st to October 31st. 1.1 million square meters is the total area of the exposition site. As we saw, 144 participant countries, 60 national pavilions, 9 thematic pavilions, 2,000 major events. It is expected that 21 million people will visit Expo and that 1 billion people will be reached through two, two programs which are Generally through internet, cyber expo and expo global communication program. 1.4 billion have been invested in direct investment to develop and organize the site of expo. 9 billion have been invested by the municipality of Milan and the local uh, administration to improve the city and to build infrastructure, including the metro line. 0.8 billion will be the direct investment uh, in Italy by the country which are putting up for pavilion and the furnishing this pavilion. And the export is expected 
to generate 70,000 jobs of an average between 2011 and 2020, with a peak of 130,000 jobs in 2015. Here I conclude. We can say the fact that we have a negative impact for the activity prior and during the expo, which is placing the CD on the media map, providing jobs, construction, services, tools, improving the city infrastructure and service facility, and also fostering the city security and beautification. And there will be a long-term impact here, strengthening the city image and the city branding internationally, leaving behind socioeconomic infrastructure, enhancing the city appeal as a business center and a tourist destination, and attracting direct foreign investment, and therefore facilitating the fruition of the office and residential space, space resulting from the recent construction activities. Obviously, everybody is aware that Expo will take place in a very difficult situation, social and economic, for Italy and many European countries, <coughs> and in a very complex situation politically for the entire world. We saw what happened at the last days in Paris. But the risk that something serious may happen in terms of civic unrest, in terms of violent manifestation, or eventually even a terrorist attack is out. However, look, we all expected dramatic events at the Winter Games in Sochi and at the Summer Olympic Games in London. Nothing has happened. I wish Milano good luck. With this, I'm finished, and I'm open to questions.